Hey guys, are you having a hard time figuring out what kind of chain your chainsaw takes? Do you have a bar that uh, doesn't have the stamps on it anymore? They're wearing off. You have a chain. You're not sure what's going on with that thing. Well, if so, go ahead and stick around and I'll teach you how to figure that out. Okay, so what we've got here is a whole bunch of different chain in front of us. It's kind of actually uh, stressful even looking at it because these are all different chain. So um, that's how crazy this gets real quick. Got a couple of different bars right here just for this example too. But uh, you might be in this situation because you have a bar on your chainsaw that looks like this. And it's hard to believe, but there are, in fact, numbers right in here. They're etched into here. And if you look very closely, maybe you can make this out. But it's nearly impossible. So there's basically three different figures that you're going to need to know to purchase chain. For the most part, anyways, there is a few exceptions to this rule, and it gets a little bit crazy. But um, for the most part, what you're looking at is your right here. That right there is your pitch. So it's this link to this link, this rivet to this rivet, basically divided by two. Right there, 72 drive links, 18 inch bar, and right here 0 0.050 50 thousandths of an inch that is your gauge so that is basically the uh the groove you see this bar right here that groove right there Let's see if i can focus on that bar that groove in the middle of that bar will correspond to that number right there 50 thousandths so these come in various different types. The most common pitches you'll see out there are quarter inch, 3 8 LP, 0.325, 3 8 regular, and 404, 0.404. I don't actually have a 0.404, but for the most part, that's what you're going to see. Now, the drive links, in this case, it's 72. These will correspond to... It's the basically the, the pitch, what the, whatever the pitch is and your bar, the length of your bar, that corresponds with a certain number of drive lengths. So this can vary all over the place, anywhere from you know, a very small amount to a very large amount if you have a very long bar. And finally, this uh, 0 .050 right here, that's your gauge. The most typical gauge sizes you're going to see are 0 .043, 0 .050, 0 0.058, that one's kind of rare. I don't actually have one of those, and I haven't actually seen one. And 0 0.063. So the very first thing you're going to want to do if you have an old chainsaw, chainsaw bar, is come over and get your bar and take a look at it and see if you can make something out on here. This one's not in the greatest shape, but it's clear enough. I do have a reference of what different size pitches are out there and what different size gauges are out there, so I'm able to kind of make this out. And right here you can see it. So it's looking like this one's going to be 0 0.063 gauge, 0.325 is your pitch. And that looks like a 6, so I think 67 drive links. Of course, you could also type this number in and reference that, and it should pull up a chain to fit this. Here's another bar. This one's brand new. This is also an Oregon bar. And this one's much more clear. Right here we can see 18-inch bar, 0 0.050. That is your gauge size, 1.3 millimeter. 0.325 is your pitch. And 72 is the number of drive links. Nice and easy right there. But supposing you couldn't read it and all you have was this chain right here. And this was just gone. 
If you don't have a pair of these, I strongly suggest getting one. This is a pair of uh, digital calipers. I'll put a link in the uh, description to a, a cheap pair like this. I strongly suggest having a pair of these around. They are great for all sorts of different things. And actually, I'm going to do a video on these one of these days just showing all of the different uses of a good pair of calipers. So let's just say we don't know what size chain this is. We're just going to go ahead and go over here with our pair of calipers and measure in between, just like the box showed us, in between these drive links right here. We're going to try to get as centered as we can. You know, you don't have to be perfect or anything. That looks pretty centered to me. I'm not looking at the gauge. I'm just looking to see if this is centered on those drive links. And there we go. We've got 0.633. So if we divide that by two, we're pretty close to 0.325. Certainly, the next step up is going to be 3.8, which is 0.375. So that would be 750 thousandths. So if you're wondering what 750 would look like, we can go ahead and set this to 750. 749.5, that's good enough. And clearly, that is not going from the center to the center. So... We do 650, yeah. So now you've got your pitch. Next step is going to be to measure one of these drive links. And if your calipers are brand new, the tips are probably pretty good on these things, but a lot of times people make mistakes when they measure with the tips of these. They, they press too hard, they do a bunch of different things. If you're using calipers, Always try to get it in the meat of these calipers if you can. Don't press too hard here. So we're going to measure this. It's measuring out at, let's see here, 0 0.060 and 5 tenths. So it's 2,000 shy of 0 0.063. I'm not surprised. It's been used. This, this chain's been spun around. It's probably worn off a few thousands. You know, calipers are not meant to be precise within a tenth or anything like that. So now we know that we've got 0.325 pitch and 0 0.063 gauge. And the next step is just simply going to be running around this entire thing. I won't do it here on camera. But the next step is going to be basically starting at a point like this running your way all the way around and back and counting each individual drive link. This right here, this piece right here, that is your drive link. So, you know, for instance, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's how you do it. So you go around that entire thing and count it. In this case, it is 67. So I would know from the measurements right there, this is a 0.325 pitch chain, 0 0.063 gauge, and 67 drive links. Hopefully that makes sense. Now this is a steel chain. It's going to be, let's see here. We're going to do the same exact thing. Looks about centered, and I'm at 746. So, or, or you can just go ahead and set this to 750. And then go over there and take a look. Does it look like 750? Does it look like it's 650? Does it look like it's 808 thousandths? That's how you figure it out. Whatever that is, divided by 2. That's your number. So in this case, it's going to be 3, 0.375, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So this is going to be 3 eighths pitch. Now we'll measure one of these drive links. You guys can see that I'm measuring the thickness of this link right here. 49 thousandths and maybe 5 tenths popped on there, 0 0.049. So we've got some options. It's either going to be 0 0.050, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0
0 0.063 or 0 0.043 or 0 0.058. So obviously it's 0 0.05. So this is 3 8 pitch by 0 0.05 gauge. And again, we can just run our way around here. And I already know this, what this chain is, but you would just pick a starting point somewhere. Maybe even put a marker on it. Or chains like these steel ones, these are great markers right here. All of them have a color on them. So you just run your way around this and count how many drive links are on that. So in this case, it's going to be 84. So one more thing that's going to make it a little bit more confusing is you're going to have one variation. This is a 3 8 chain right here, and this is a 3 8 chain right here. Both of these are 3 8 pitch. Now, let's see what this one measures out at. This one also measured out at 50 thousandths. So this is also a 3 8 pitch and 50 thousandths gauge. The difference between these two is one. This has anti-kickback protection built into it, and that is what this is right here. This is anti-kickback. If you notice up here, this one does not have that. This is just full-on tooth and raker. Tooth and raker. Right here you have a tooth and it, well, let's just go right here actually. A tooth and a raker. And then you've got this goofy thing in between them, and that's for anti-kickback. Also, this chain right here, this is an old chain. This is a low profile. So 3 8 come in low profile and standard. And you can just look at the differences between these two. Most of your smaller uh, consumer-grade chainsaws, like your 16-inch bars and less, they're probably going to have the low profile on it. I can't find anywhere online that actually tells me what measurements to look for for that, unfortunately. Like, how tall should this be? How tall should the tooth be? Perhaps it's somewhere. If you guys know where to find that, go ahead and throw it in the comments. Help everyone out here. But do your best to decipher between the two. And these are not interchangeable with each other. I believe that the 3 8 low profile can go into the 3 8 regular bar, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I think this one cannot go into this one. It's something to do with the depth of the, uh, the drive length. So even though they're the same space, there's some different depth on them or something like that. So I don't know too much about that part of it, but these are your safety ones for the most part. Your low profile ones are going to take less of a cut. They're safer, all that kind of stuff. Again, um, if you're not sure, Google is your friend. If you have a, like I said, a consumer saw, go on there and check the specs on your saw. If you don't know any of these things, you can go down to a shop somewhere and take your chain down there and they'll figure it out for you. But if you want to order this stuff online yourself and also have an idea what's going on, this is a good way of doing it. So a couple other things to look for, like I just said right there, this is going to be, this is an old used chain, but you can see right here, this is your anti-kickback device. And what happens here is, when this is on a, a bar like, I don't have a bar right in front of me for this one, but when this is on a bar like this, spinning around, what causes your kickback is in here, in this quadrant right here. What causes kickback is when this tooth comes around and really digs in to an edge. So your raker is not so much engaged anymore. And that extra safety device right there helps prevent this tooth from digging in. That's basically what it means. All right, so here's a couple more things that you can look at when you're pur purchasing chains. So this, these are both steel chains. They're for a 25 inch bar. This has got a yellow color on it right here. This has got a green, yellow and green. Yellow is the dangerous, green is the safe one. So green is the safety chain, or the safer chain at least in this case. So if you're online and you're purchasing a chain and you are not a professional, get the green chain. It's just safer. Uh, I know this one probably cuts faster and everything like that, but 
Uh, maybe if you're experienced and you really want to go faster and all that kind of stuff, maybe it's worth it to you. Certainly if you're in the professional industry or if you really know your way around a chainsaw, yeah. Otherwise, spend a little bit of extra time. Go with, go with the green if you're not comfortable. And we can see what the difference is here between the steel. So a couple of them on this one. Also, this is your non-safety chain. Notice it's just a tooth and a raker. Tooth and raker. Go over to the safety chain, and what we've got here is a tooth and a raker, but then there's this extra little bit in here. See that guy right there? That's not on the other one, and that's what makes this safer. It also makes it more complicated to grind it, sharpen it. Other things to notice about these two chains. You'll see all sorts of different terminology out there like semi-chisel, full chisel, skip tooth, all these different things. So for the most part, you're going to see like this. See how that tooth looks right here? See this right there at the end. See how that's rounded like that? That's a semi-chisel. And then full chisel is going to be nice and square looking. Again, this is going to be more aggressive. Full chisel. Now, see that point right there? Sorry, my hands are filthy from picking all these chains up. That point right there, that is full chisel chain. A skip tooth chain will be just like it implies. So you've got a lot less teeth. And basically what that does is if you're running a, a longer bar than maybe you should be or something like that, it's going to give you a little bit of extra power going through it, not engaging so many teeth. But honestly, if you're... If you're here watching this explanation, um, you're probably not running a skip tooth chain. One more random thing right here is we've got this uh, strunk chainsaw. This is an old like 50s or 60s one. You're probably not going to run into this too often, but just to show that it's possible, the, uh, the chain on this one is abnormal. They don't even make this stuff anymore. But again, same principle. Let's just go over and see what we got here. And we're going to... Let's see, we'll do this one. It's right in front of the camera. We're going to measure right there to there. There we go. And we've got 1.01. So this is a half inch chain. So it's 1.01, one inch divided by two. This is a half inch chain right here, the, uh, the pitch on this one. So that's abnormal. You won't hardly ever see that unless it's an old chainsaw. Again, they don't even make this stuff anymore. But there are other things out there that exist. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks and have a great day.